we're going to talk all about work-related stress. And it really doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur running your own business or partnering with someone else, or if you're an employee working for a company, stress is stress. I think we all know what it's like to come home from the end of the day and have our mind racing and constantly thinking about the issues and the problems at work or maybe some work-related tension that we're having with somebody. And you know, when all of these thoughts are clouding our mind and clouding our judgment, it affects our mood and it affects our relationships and it affects our body. Like, it can just totally bring us down. And that's part of the reason why I think it's so important that we have techniques to sort of help us deal with the stress, but also to help us prevent ourselves from becoming so stressed, right? One of the things that I really like to do, like, so, you know, you have those days where you go from zero to 60 in like, nothing flat like you're just on the brink of losing it or you are in the process of losing it you want to just take a deep breath i actually say to myself like when i feel all of those body sensations happening and i you know i can feel myself starting to lose control i say to myself okay renee you need to stop right now and just take a moment to breathe and then i give myself like at minimum 30 seconds or as long as i have available to just regulate my breathing. When we get really angry like that, and we have all this adrenaline coursing through our bodies, it's because we're now in this like fight or flight response, right? And when we're in that kind of a state, it's really difficult to be mentally clear and to not react. The other thing that I think is really important, and this is partly preventative, is to have time when we disconnect. So there's time after work when we really need to just shut down the laptop, shut down the phone, just be technology free. A couple of tricks that I like to do to disconnect. Additionally, is one, I'll put my phone on airplane mode when I'm doing certain tasks. This way I'm not getting bombarded by notifications. But then on top of that, I actually have changed the settings on my phone so that nothing pushes into me. And I know not everyone can do this, but certainly there are a lot of apps or a lot of things that you have on your phone where you can make the choice to turn the notification off and just go grab it when you are ready and able to. For those days when you feel like you've messed up or you're not gonna be able to deliver or you failed at something, what I like to do is a worst case scenario. So if I don't deliver on this, if I don't complete this, what's the worst that's going to happen? For most people, they'll see if they're working for an employer that worst case scenario is they'll get fired or lose their job. And for people who own a business or have a business or partnering with someone, Worst case scenario is the partnership will dissolve, the business will go under, and you'll have to start all over again. And while those things are like horrible and not necessarily what you want, at the end of the day, you're not going to die. You'll pick yourself back up and you'll start over again. So when you sort of look at that and you see, okay, what is the worst case scenario? Will I be able to handle it? And you see that you will, it really takes the edge off the stress so that you can just sort of get grounded, find your center, and relax. Okay, but let's say you do the worst case scenario and now it's made you even more worried, stressed, and overwhelmed. Then the next thing that I like to do is a, well, what are the things that are most important to me in life anyway? So when you actually sit down to ask yourself 10, 15, 20 years from now, this thing that you're really, really worried about, is it really going to matter? A lot of the times the answer is no. When you have that perspective, then you're able to see, okay, like this might be really icky or this is going to be uncomfortable or maybe I'm not going to like what happens or like what's happening right now, but at the end of the day, I still have my friends, my family, and the things that matter most to me, and that is where I'm gonna focus my energy and my attention right now. Tomorrow, I can go and pick up back where I left off, on the job, or with that client, or whatever. Now this one is really important and it speaks to um, just the overall stress that you'll experience on a day-to-day -day basis, but also it's there to prevent stress and it's really being yourself. 
If you are working at a place where you have to suppress yourself, pretend to be something else, or like you just don't really feel comfortable or at home, then you're always going to be more stressed than somebody who does feel like they have personal freedom or does feel like they have flexibility or does feel like they have some power or or does feel like they get to just be themselves. So it's important to really just evaluate the job that you're doing or the business that you're in. Do you get to be yourself as much as you need or is comfortable for you? And if you're not, then it's really time to start looking at how you can create another opportunity, either create another business or get another job. And then finally, if all else fails, just dance it out. I'm a huge fan of Grey's Anatomy, and if you watch the show, you know that Meredith and Christina Yang, you know, when they're going through tough times and they have a major problem, they just dance it out. And the way to do it is just to physically move your body to something pleasurable and allow your body to move your mind into a higher state. What are some ways that you handle stress? What do you do to like de-stress? If there's something that I haven't talked about in this video, definitely go ahead and leave it below because I'm sure it would help a ton of people. And as always, it's been so great to be with you for the video and I can't wait to see you for the next one. Mwah.